Good evening, my little nerds, or shall I say good morning? I'm just gonna act like it's 4 a.m. and I'm recording this video for you, um, when in fact it's nearly 10 p.m. And true story, I tried to get ahead and record a video while in office today, but the mill workers started sawing in the background all over again, and it just was not worth it, nor could I get two words in without sounding like complete chaos. So here I am at home, um, on this Thursday at 10 p.m. or Wednesday is it? Honestly, all the days are mixed up. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and comment below anything that you guys are questioning, questions you have, ideas you have, suggestions you have. I read through the comments. I may not be able to answer all of them because to toddlers below the age of four, and trying to keep up with life but i read them so i see you all right <coughs> what are we talking about today today my friends we are going to cover acne tips and tricks because i've seen a lot of the questions surrounding acne i've seen a lot of confusion about acne i find acne to be a confusing topic to be very honest with you because not all acne is created equal there is non-inflammatory acne, which is basically blackheads and whiteheads. The whiteheads are the ones that are closed off to the surface of your skin, also known as milia. Because they have never been exposed to oxygen, they stay white. Now, the ones that are exposed to oxygen that have a hole at the center or the top become black because they get oxidized. And those are non-inflammatory lesions of acne because there's no redness, there's no pain, there's no pus, there's no there's no volcano about to erupt, but they're constantly there and they're annoying. Then we have inflammatory acne. We have acne that is, you can kind of feel that little pest of a little pimple come up before it actually comes up and they tend to hurt. And when it becomes much more severe and can lead to scarring, we usually refer to that as cystic acne because it can leave larger residual deficits and problems for you behind. So those are sort of in a nutshell, what we think of when we think of acne, but there is a fourth category, also known as hormonal acne, which tends to occur in women in their late 20s, all of a sudden, and I said occur in a very weird way, um, out of nowhere, like your skin wants to be a teenager again. And that tends to affect the jawline distribution, and it tends to be cyclical with your period. And there is last rosacea. Rosacea is a form of adult acne. It tends to have several different categories. Not a video for today, it can be a whole other video, but we can try to treat it somewhat the same way. So let's dive in. Starting with numero uno, don't forget to wash your face. No, you're not dirty if you have acne, but not washing your face, especially at night, can make things much worse because you have a lot of buildup throughout the day. I hope to whatever you believe in that you are wearing sunscreen and sunscreen and the day can have a buildup on your skin and you need to make sure that you are cleansing and ridding all of those buildups and those toxins throughout the day off before you go to sleep at night. Because think about it, you're putting your head on that pillow. You don't wanna put your head on that pillow with the shit of the day all up on that pillow sheet. You wanna make sure you wash your face at night. Um, that is probably the most important thing you could do for yourself. So if you're sitting there questioning, do I wash my face because I like the way my makeup looks today, get your ass off that couch or bed and go wash your face. Um, I think though cleansers are not all created equal. So I have a few here that I just wanna quickly give you guys a few little tips about, okay? So starting with actives and cleansers. Actives and cleansers are kind of like throwing money down the drain, very truthfully, very literally, and uh, not figuratively, because the actives are literally being washed down the drain. And what I've noticed is most people go, no joke, right? And then they kind of use the towel to dry their face. Probably less than 15 seconds. If you are going to use a cleanser with an active, my advice to you, and here's a tip, Put the cleanser on your skin, massage it in, let it sit for a few minutes before you decide to massage it off, wash it off. So how should you let it sit for a few minutes? Maybe go take a dump. Go take a dump with the cleanser sitting on your skin. 
it's going to give you extra time and extra TLC and extra face time with your active. That's a good word. I need to write that down. Hold on. Please hold. Okay. So yeah, sorry. I'm back. I had a thought. Okay. So what are you looking for when it comes to actives in your cleanser? The biggest ones tend to actually be if you have inflammatory acne, the acne that is a little bit painful before it comes up, especially if you have oily skin and if you are at the beginnings of even cystic acne, right? Benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is one of those tried and trues. It can bleach your towels, so be very careful if you have colored towels. It can also dry your skin out. So I like Penoxyl, very much so. It's at 4%. You do not really need more. 5%, there are 10% washes. They're not necessarily better. You usually get what you need between 4 and 5%. And because it's so, it can be so harsh on your skin, I would probably stick to 4%. But you can use it on your face, let it sit, and then wash it off. And I would recommend doing this twice a week. So I tend to keep this in my shower, to be very honest with you. And if you have chest acne or back acne or you work out a lot, put this in your gym bag. Make sure that you wash your body with this after the gym because it will help keep all the bacteria at bay from sweat and buildup. So I like this one. Number two, I think this one by Neutrogena is a little bit misleading. I am not going to lie. First of all, it says stubborn texture. This is not gonna help even out your texture because it's not strong enough to help you even out your texture. But it says salicylic acid acne treatment, but they choose to highlight 4% glycolic acid and polyhydroxy acid. I'm a little confused by this one. The only reason I'm sort of recommending it is if you cannot tolerate salicylic acid, the classic orange liquid Neutrogena wash, which is this guy right here, this is a good alternative because it's at 1% salicylic acid. I wish they marketed it better. Maybe they could have said salicylic acid for sensitive skin because it is not as strong as the 2% classic salicylic acid. But to go ahead and to put on the front 4% glycolic acid and polyhydroxy acid, when in the ingredient list it's quite low, I'm a little bit confused by. So this is one that I say, it's not gonna make your texture smooth as a baby's bottom, but, I mean, those are pretty dimpled. My baby's bottom was very cellulitic, but smooth as, if you've ever felt Venetian plaster, Venetian plaster, it is going to help at least with some of the acne if you have oily skin, but you are sensitive. So this one I thought was worth mentioning because it's at 1% salicylic acid. However, if you're super sensitive and you're so scared of drying your face out, this is a good one. The Clean and Clear Deep Action. It is a cream cleanser I will show you guys. So it's definitely gonna be softer on your face. Um, Salicylic acid is not even mentioned with a drug fact on the back, so it's probably way less than 1%. So at least you're getting some of this. If you have very dry and sensitive skin, this is the cleanser that I would recommend for you because it's not gonna dry you out and you're gonna have some benefit from the salicylic acid with this one. So if you are dry and sensitive, I go for this one. If you are oily and sensitive, I'd probably go for this one and test this one out. If you're just oily but not sensitive, you could get the 2% salicylic acid. And if you have inflammatory acne, including on your body, I would do this one. But this one is probably just twice a week, at most, at least at first to try, because you don't know how much you can tolerate it. Moving on, no scrubs, no scrub. I'm not gonna sing that song again, but each time I say no scrub, I think of TLC, I don't want no scrub, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that thinks he's fly, a scrub is a scrub that thinks he's gonna make you some favors, but it's just gonna feed your OCD tendencies. Don't go for the physical scrubs. You don't need the beads in your life. Beads, not bees. Everybody needs the bees in their lives. But as an alternative, I like an enzymatic scrub. An enzymatic scrub is not a bead scrub. An enzymatic scrub is actually, and I'm gonna show you guys this one from Huda Beauty Wishful, and this is their Yoglo. First of all, it smells divine. But second of all, you see how it's very fine? There is a very light texture to it that as you start doing this over and over and over and over, I'm going to show you how an enzymatic scrub ends up building up and picking up all the superficial dead cells and dead crap on the surface of your skin. So just to give you guys, it becomes kind of like that. 
without being harsh on your face. So if you have OCD tendencies and you just feel the need to do something to buff your skin, an enzymatic scrub is probably the best way to go. And I quite frankly, I like them too, because I do have OCD tendencies. And sometimes I know I could, like I do keep my nails on the shorter side, because I know I can try to pick things, especially like on my back if I feel something coming. So this actually fills two urges in one, but I like it. It's a nice one for you who is a scrub aficionado, but you really shouldn't be. And then last, I just want to quickly say when it comes to acids, and we talked a lot about salicylic acid right now, salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid. There are also alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid or lactic acid, but the salicylic acid, the beta one is better for oily skin, which usually tends to be more acne prone because it's oil loving. And so it can go deeper into your pores to help break up that buildup and help clear your skin from inside out. Well, not really from inside out, but from deep down. Okay, so that's why I picked salicylic acid. But more is not more. So everybody was obsessed with the Ordinaries, this guys, which is 2% BHA, great, but married to 30% AHA. This can burn your face off. And if you do this way too much, you are gonna overstrip your skin of its natural oils, making you then have an inflamed barrier making your inflammation probably worse and making you then overproduce oils because you're basically stripping your skin of what it naturally produces and you're going to be oilier in the process so don't overdo this you don't really want to burn your face off i know people like extremes this is not one that i usually recommend this is one that i recommend for somebody who has an occasional pimple who wants to do a chemical peel once every few weeks okay but not more 30 percent is a lot and I do not recommend it on a regular basis at all. Um, I actually think if you're somebody who has not so oily skin, you don't want to use salicylic acid or you can't tolerate salicylic acid, I love glycolic acid. Glycolic acid exfoliates as well, but it's also more geared towards quote unquote anti-aging, which is basically pro-aging, which is helping produce more collagen and helping even out your skin tone over time. This is the one by La Roche-Posay, the one that stanks. There's also the one by L'Oreal. The reason I don't tend to recommend a crazy variety of products all the time is because I really need to use products and see them and make sure that they're tried and true and that I firmly believe what they are and stand by them before I recommend them. So just in case you guys were wondering. So that's what I have to say when it comes to acids and cleansers. Moving on, tip number two, although I think I gave you guys 500 tips. So maybe like trick number two, um, don't skip your moisturizer. If you live in a dry climate, if you have somebody with acne who lives in a humid climate, India or Indonesia or South, like Brazil, like somewhere humid, don't need, you don't need to moisturize. But if you live in a very dry climate, where like literally like, right? You can moisturize even though you have acne. And I would recommend that you do moisturize because you don't want your skin to think it's dry and try to overproduce oils. The same reason why you don't want to overstrip your skin of its natural oils, oils <laughs> by over cleansing, okay? So I would not skip on a moisturizer and I would recommend anybody who has active acne and who still wants to moisturize, start with a gel moisturizer not a thick creamy moisturizer start with something that is more gel like in texture i would avoid the ones with hyaluronic acid just because it might be a little bit inflammatory and i'm trying to minimize anything that could be inflammatory for you so start with a gel based moisturizer like the one by avino the one i always talk about the common restore um, because it's glycerin based it's not going to be inflammatory and it's probably going to be better suited for your skin Embryolisse is also a nice one. Um, it's a French brand. I love it. I use it as a primer in the summertime when it's more humid outside. Um, and so those are two that I think you guys could try out and are more lightweight. If you feel you need to supplement with more, then you can go and, go and like experiment with thicker moisturizers. Now, the third step or two and a half is sunscreen. If you are going to be wearing a sunscreen every day, and that is a trick statement because you should be wearing sunscreen every day, especially if you have inflammatory acne because the sun hitting the active pimples are gonna make them turn brown and linger longer on your face, leaving residual marks even longer than you want them. So that was a total trick. 
So you should be wearing sunscreen every day. But if you are scared of wearing a moisturizer and sunscreen, which I totally get because it's too much on your face and on top of it, you're in a human environment. I love this guy by La Roche Posay. It's great. It is a double repair face moisturizer, UV, broad spectrum. It is not just a moisturizer. It's also a sunscreen at SPF 30 with niacinamide. And it's a nicer, lightweight sort of texture. I think you guys saw. It does not leave behind any sort of residue or cast. Do this, I'll show you guys. Okay, and honestly, when I use this, you really don't need to use a moisturizer, to be very frank. I have very sensitive eyes. It sometimes makes my eyes a little bit sensitive, so just test it out first. Which leads me to my next tip, which I'm gonna just say is tip number three. Spot test anything you guys use or introduce into your skincare routine. If you guys get super excited about a product, don't just dive right in. Spot test it first, maybe in the front of your ear, to make sure that your skin doesn't react in a negative way to it. And do that for a few days, maybe even up to a week, before you decide to submerge your face in it. Because it's always better to dip your toes first. I mean, do you want to get married before you even date a person? I hope not. So let us make sure that we date with a little spot test before we jump in and get married. Okay? And speaking of spots, this is tip number, I think, one, two, three, four. One, two, I don't even know. Um, patch testing. Patch, pimple patches, not patch testing. 10 p.m. Um, acne pimple patches. Hydrocolloid patches. I love them. Because when you have a juicy pimple coming to a head and you just want to pop it, do not pop it. My old medical assistant came to me in an emergency situation, which one day I will share her pictures with you if she allows me to, because she was really worried about a massive pimple she had on her forehead that she was picking at. And she kept picking at it to the point where it literally became the size of this big, right here on the middle of her forehead, exuding pus. And when I was able to kind of debride it and get rid of the little sack, she had a little gashing hole in her forehead, which has now healed and closed off nicely. I will ask if she'll allow me to share that story. But the point of the story is do not pick and instead let this guy or this guy do the work for you. Hydrocolloid patches suck all the gunk out and do it in a very gentle fashion so that you are not causing more trauma to your skin. The tip here is take a hot shower, let that pimple come to a real head, right? and then put the patch on overnight afterwards so that it's really at a head. The Cosmer X patches are 19 bucks. This is a nice drugstore dupe for 11.99. I put prices on so I could see them. They're both pretty much equal, okay? And if you don't want to use a patch for whatever reason, but you just want to dry something, suck something dry, I actually really like this particular product from In Beauty Project, which is pimple paste. Pimple paste, and it looks like toothpaste, but it is not, is a sulfur-based paste. And sulfur is a great ingredient for people who have oily inflammatory acne, because not only does it absorb all the excess, I don't know, oil, it does have a color, you probably cannot leave it on, but you can leave like a large gunk. I mean, I could even, there, okay? And not only does it uh, absorb that excess oil, but it also debrides the dead skin cells that are usually clogging your pores, leading to more blackheads and whiteheads. So I actually really like sulfur, and this one does not stink. The only thing about this particular one is that it has oregano and thyme and willow bark, so if you're very sensitive, you might be a little bit careful. But then again, spot test first on a small little pimple before you go crazy. It's a pimple paste for your little pimple. Um, so that one is my next spot tip. And then we have, obviously, retinoids. Retinoids are probably going to be your holy grail ingredient to help minimize any sort of buildup within your pores. At the drugstore, there is different adapalene, which you can be using at night. It is one of the strongest ones available over the counter. It's not a joke. You do not want to use this while pregnant. Just be careful, um, and it might make you very sensitive. So approach with caution. I cannot use it at all over here. 
Um, there are prescription ones like this one, Altrino at 0.025%. At and then you have over-the-counter retinols. But just be aware when it comes to retinols, there's a lot of misleading marketing on, you know, on the market. Um, this one is by Glossier. Here they write universal pro-retinol. So you think you're getting a retinol. You're in fact getting a retinol sunflower rate, retinol sunflower rate, which is a precursor to even retinols. So it's actually pretty light. And at 0.5%, um, it's actually misleading because it's a blend. It's not just retinol palmitate, it's retinol, retinol married with some other fatty acid at different percentages. And so it's not all 0.5%. So again, this is very light. If you are a novice who wants to enter the retinol game, this is not as strong as it appears. A pro-retinol is not a retinol. It's actually lighter than a retinol. And so if you are somebody who wants to enter the world but not too scared to jump into a retinol, I would start maybe with this. You can graduate to something like L'Oreal's 0.3% pure retinol. And then you can go up to different from things that are available to you without having you see a doctor. And last, I think these are my most interesting. And if you stuck around till here, you guys are winning. Okay. But... I love hypochlorous acid. Tower 28 is a great brand. It's aspirational, it's $28, and it's a beautiful little bottle, and it's great. I actually spritz it on the inside of my mask throughout the day to help minimize any sort of inflammation. I have recently discovered this one for $10 by Walgreens. <laughs> it is their cleansing spray, which is also hypochlorous solution. It is a combination of sodium hypochlorite and phosphoric acid to help create a hypochlorous solution, which also works in the same way. So these two are great to help you control your acne throughout the day. I kid you not, as you go throughout your day, especially if you are wearing a mask, just spray this all over and go live your life and make sure that it is working for you. Or spray it on the inside of your mask to make sure that you're clearing off any bacteria throughout the day. I love these guys. And finally, Hibaclens. Hibaclens is also known as chlorexidine. This is a Walgreens dupe at $5.39 if you have buttony. Anything from the neck down. And I focus on the butt because it's cute. Um, but if you have acne on your butt, your back, your chest, I would recommend using this. Just do not get it near your eyes or your ears because it can have unwanted side effects. This is the stuff that doctors recommend for patients before surgery to help clear any sort of bacteria on your body. And I think it works really well for butt acne, back acne, chest acne, you name it, just not on your face. And with that, those are my acne tips and tricks. I feel like I gave you guys so much information that we could have had 20 videos in this and maybe I'll break it up and do deeper dives on the different sections, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am Dr. Shereen Idris and I wish you guys all a beautiful Saturday. Namaste. Adios. Ciao. Ma'a Ciao, salamat, bye. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs>